Okay, so in today's video, we will be taking a look at something that I thought was going to be a little bit more boring, honestly, but now that I've taken a little bit of a closer look myself, I can see that it is more exciting than other releases. So here we go to see Ubuntu 22.04. So for this video, we will be breaking this down into three parts, the changes, the performance, and should you use it. So first of all, let's start out with the changes. But first, I, need, I do need to mention that this is not an official release. This version of Ubuntu is not set out to release till April 21st. This is a beta build that you can download for free online. And this is for the Raspberry Pi 4. And you can just download it, but there definitely will be some issues. And it is not an official release. So when that official release comes out in April of 21st, there may be some other changes that are better or worse. We'll just have to take a look at it again then in April. But here basically we can have a quick sneak peek at what the future release will actually look like. So first of all, what type of changes do we get in this version? So first of all, probably the biggest change is going to be that we are running GNOME 42. So this is a long-term support Ubuntu version, like Ubuntu 20.04, meaning it will be supported for a long time. Unlike the previous release that was Ubuntu 21.10, that actually just shipped with GNOME 40. So what seems a little bit interesting to me is that Ubuntu or Canonical seems to be skipping GNOME 41 and going straight to GNOME 42 for this build, which definitely is a little bit strange, but maybe they just didn't think that there was too much special in GNOME 41, and there are going to be some welcome changes in GNOME 42. So, GNOME 42 brings us some new applications, but overall, the feel looks like GNOME 40. So, if we click activities right here, we see we can change our desktops and it scrolls vertically just like GNOME 40 did. And then we can click right here and all of our applications look pretty, pretty standard to Ubuntu, but there were a few changes that I noticed. Such as, in here we are going to have a new screenshot manager, which honestly looks really beautiful in my opinion. It honestly looks like Mac OS, like a Mac OS style application, which I am a big fan of right here. So we can select something right here, click copy, and it's going to just copy it straight to our clipboard or it can, we can show it in files in our pictures screenshots folder. So that screenshot manager seems to be really awesome, honestly, just the whole design and aesthetics of it really apply to my love language of the desktop usage with those nice curved corners. And look at that. It, it, it picks that window up very nicely there and we can get a nice perfect screenshot of that window which just looks so beautiful. We can actually also record our screen with that same screenshot manager which is also a really awesome feature we, so we could use this to record our entire screen and then send it to a friend or even use this as some recording software for let's say a YouTube video. So next we actually do have some new options in the nice settings manager of Ubuntu 22.04. So we do come with that new interesting Ubuntu logo in the about section. Personally, I was a bigger fan of that circle Ubuntu logo. I don't really understand why to have that big rectangle with it, the Ubuntu logo inside of it. It doesn't really apply to me. It's just my personal preference, but you know, you may think differently. And we are using Wayland, by the way, and we are on a jammy jellyfish. That's what it was called, Ubuntu jammy jellyfish. So that you can change it to XORG if you do want from the login screen, but you know, Wayland seems to be okay. But the biggest changes come in the appearance, yeah, in the appearance tab. So right here, we're gonna have two styles. So right now we are on light, we can go to a dark theme. Okay, now the dark theme, honestly, it looks a lot better if you do ask me. I don't really love that light theme, but with the dark theme, it looks pretty nice. And this is something that I just loved so much about Zorin OS. And I wish that other distros also included it. And that would be accent colors. And Windows also has something like this. But here we could sit, select this color right here. Give it a second. It does take a little bit of time to switch over. But you see, even 
just the files application changed and our app store logo changed right here and we get some also nice other little changes in our system such as if we open up the folders the folders are all going to be that nice turquoise style color and there are many colors right here you can choose custom colors but there are these predefined colors right here that all look pretty nice and it just gives you a little bit more freedom to customize your desktop in any way that you like and that's just a reason that i kind of enjoy it and at desktop icons we can also change their size i would probably leave it as small because i'm personally i like it small but if you don't want that you can turn that off right there i'm gonna leave that off and you can actually auto hide the dock so there is finally more customization to this dock on the side right here so let's say i wanted to make this bigger bam it auto hides the dock kind of like mac os you can do mac os or with the plank dock which is also really awesome and this is something that i am excited about we knew we now have a new panel mode so we turn this off look at that we have like a full-fledged dog without having to go install an extension or do anything like that by default we can do it from the ubuntu settings which is something i am excited about you guys may not be but i think it's really awesome and you can control the icon size to make it a little bit smaller if you like you can put it down on the bottom if you wanted that a different type of like more mac os feel or you could put it on the right as well so there is definitely more customization right away from the settings with this version of ubuntu meaning that you don't have to go and wait for to or go and install extensions there are more things in here which is honestly a really i'm i'm excited about it i like it and there you can do some different settings for the dock right here so you know i may be geeking out a little bit but just seeing some more modernization to ubuntu is really awesome in my opinion but most everything else is going to be pretty similar in here i haven't taken a look at everything but you know it's the gnome settings what else could change so much yeah and that is basically some of the new changes that we get with this version i am a big fan about the dock and changing the accent colors it may not seem like much like i said before but it is a little bit exciting for me one more thing that came comes with ubuntu 22.04 is something called ubuntu pro so when i boot this distro up i actually get this little pop-up right here and it says do you want to enable ubuntu pro so if i clicked on it right there is it going to open anything Oh, here we go, Ubuntu Pro. So right here it says Ubuntu Pro, and I googled what Ubuntu Pro was, and this says that Ubuntu Pro, for I, a, it's a AWS, it's a premium image delivering the most comprehensive open source security and AWS compliance. Ubuntu Pro is suitable for small to large scale Linux enterprise operations, offering pay as you go billing on your existing AWS invoice. So this must be something connected to AWS and Ubuntu. And it does work on the Raspberry Pi, at least that's what it looks like. And you could attach this to I don't really know so much about AWS and Ubuntu Pro, but as you can see, the, it looks like the Raspberry Pi is going to support it in this version of Ubuntu 22.04, and this is just a little app where we can control some of these software and updates, which is also cool. So, we went over some of the new changes. Oh, look at that. Sorry, Ubuntu 22.04 has experienced an internal error. So this could be due to this being a beta image and there just are some issues with it right now. So don't worry too much. Hopefully in the full build, that will be fixed. Before I was gonna end the changes part right here, but first of all, we should take a look at the Linux kernel to see what, what version of the Linux kernel we have. So we'll type in rename-r. And we are shipping right now with the 5.15 Raspberry kernel, but maybe we'll get a more updated kernel on the later version, or maybe we'll say like this, I'm not too sure. But you know, if you were interested, that is the kernel that we ship with. So enough of that, let's talk about some of the performance that you get with using this version of Ubuntu. So let's open up our terminal and take a look at htop since that is something that shows us our system resources. So do we have it installed? Let me install htop real fast with NeoFetch. Okay, htop is now installed. And if we type in htop right here, you can see. So as you can see, our RAM usage right here is around 981 megabytes. So that is kind of high for the Raspberry Pi considering many people own a 2 gig Pi. And one of the changes that was supposed to come with this version of Ubuntu was installing Zswap to use with 
to enable the usage of this operating system with two gigabyte Raspberry Pis and four gig Pis. So maybe that is working in the background or maybe it's not even in this beta build yet. I am not personally sure yet, but you know, the RAM usage hasn't really changed yet. But overall, that is basically there, but that doesn't give the full overview of the performance, of course. And the NeoFetch, as you can see, we'll look at it real fast. Everything seems okay. There isn't too much to talk about here, honestly. So overall, let's take a look at performance, such as opening multiple apps at one time, web browsing, and different things like that. So we'll open up two files applications right here. We'll click right here. You see there was a tiny bit of lag right there. We'll go ahead and try to open up LibreOffice. Yeah, there definitely is a little bit of lag so far. We'll try to open up Firefox at the same time. So we are really loading up the Raspberry Pi, even if it doesn't seem like a ton. The Raspberry Pi, I mean, it's not a crazy powerful thing. You gotta remember that. So we'll open up a writer document in LibreOffice. Here we go, Firefox, come on. We got tip of the days in here. Oh, that's for LibreOffice. We'll go to google.com, see how fast that will load up. We'll close this out and we'll start typing like we're typing a document. I can type well, as you can see. I can type well. Let's restore our session. Okay, go to. Okay, here we are at google.com. We have LibreOffice open right here. If we try to get our doc, we have files applications open right here. So, you know, is it handling it? I mean, let's open up a terminal as well. Type in HTOP. So, you know, it is handling it all with, it's only up like 500 megabytes with all these applications open. But let's say we tried to play a YouTube video at the same time. It's definitely going to struggle, I think. And just it, the system does feel a little bit laggy, like just switching between windows even. It's not the most smooth or most graceful experience that you're, you're ever going to get on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, we'll go to the 720p video. But you know, YouTube isn't taking so long to load up either, which it does on some distros, which is honestly kind of cool that it's going fairly fast on here. And as you can see, our cores are maxing out. So we are really maxing out what the Raspberry Pi can handle right now especially on Ubuntu. Our RAM usage isn't crazy high, which is cool, but if you were on a two gig Pi, you would be pretty much struggling right now since you would only have 200 megabytes free. But since I'm on an eight gig Pi, I'm not struggling, but I could see where this could struggle for some Raspberry Pis. Here we go, guys, a 720p video at 24 frames and we are dropping a lot right now with all these applications open so trying to type in a document while watching a youtube video you can see the youtube video is trying to load right here let's unpause it are you gonna is it gonna work sure you could watch this video right here but it's just and like we could even snap these windows together right here that's a cool feature in ubuntu but you know, you are dropping like 160 frames, quite a few frames, honestly. So it isn't the best experience. But if I were to close the background applications right here, I'm not gonna save my document if I can get it closed and it's not responding. <laughs> so you are gonna run into some issues like that. But here we go. Here we have those applications closed. Our core usages are lower now, great. Let's see if we can get it where it will drop less frames. So you know, it still is dropping quite a few frames, honestly, which is a little bit of a bummer. But just let's talk about the watchableness. Is it is this watchable at 720p? Sure. I mean, I would say that you could watch videos on here at 720p. It's not going to be the greatest experience. But yeah, it's not going to be the worst either. And 1080p is probably going to be even worse than this, considering how many frames we're dropping on this video. That's not even set to all right, it's 720p right now. So, you know, there it's not going to be the best. In terms of web browsing, though, web browsing, you know, you're going to do okay on here. It is still just Ubuntu. Ubuntu is quite a heavy distro, considering that GNOME is kind of heavy. As you can see here, Amazon is struggling a little bit to launch. Even with that, could be due to my internet, but you know. It's just, it's a little bit annoying that it's taking a this long to load up something like Amazon. So here we got it. We finally got Amazon loaded up. And as you can see, I can really do anything I want, but there is going to be just a little bit of like lag in that scrolling or a little bit of tearing when scrolling. And that's something that's kind of common on the Raspberry Pi, honestly, which I'm not really surprised about.
So enough of that, enough about performance. As you can see, can you get your work done by using this currently? I mean, you could. It's not going to be the most best experience, but you could get it done. But hopefully on the real release, we will get some better changes and maybe even CZ swap if it's not already on here, which could improve performance some somewhat. So before we end the video, let's take a little bit of a closer look and see are there really anything in here that is special like our new app store right here i, I said new it might not, it might not be new i never really use the ubuntu app store but you know it looks okay it looks a little bit interesting so if we wanted to search something right here such as like raspberry pi imager here we go raspberry pi imager and you can see this is going to be a snap it's a snap of course so you could install the snap version of a raspberry pi imager what other applications if we, if we wanted to explore looked at games there's nothing in here or is it just not loading not really sure so you know you can use this but this is mainly going to be snaps as far as i'm concerned and even firefox on this build is a snap that's something that comes with ubuntu 22.04 as well so you know I have a software store, I'm not going to wait for it to load up. So as you can see, there are really some cool changes in Ubuntu 20.04, such as the includence of some more customization in the settings application and different things like that. There are a few new wallpapers as well, but you know, the Ubuntu Jellyfin wallpaper is okay. Oh, look at that. That one honestly looks pretty cool. <laughs> I'm going off context right here, but you know, there are some cool changes in this version of Ubuntu. And I hope to see the performance increase in further releases with the Raspberry Pi and to see some new changes as well. So if you would be interested in my review of the official version in April, let me know in the comments below any questions about this version of Ubuntu. Also, just hit me up down below or on my Discord server, PyTalk. So, I mean, if you enjoyed the video, a subscribe would be incredible. A like to the video would be amazing. And thanks for watching.